Hey guys, Yo Cap Alex here, and today uh, I'm going to be giving my sort of review slash final thoughts and impressions on uh, Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion. Uh, if you've been keeping up with the channel, uh, you'll know that I did a Let's Play of, of Octo Expansion, which uh, by the time this video goes up, I should have a playlist of every episode of, of my Octo Expansion Let's Play, so you can go check that out on my channel. Uh, so yeah, um, so other than that, uh, the Splatoon 2 Octo, the Splatoon 2 Octo expansion Let's Play was really fun for me. Uh, it thankfully didn't take as long as the original one, I, I felt, I, I, in my opinion, although it's probably because I've spent 300 hours in, 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 in Splatoon 2 prior to Octo expansion, whereas prior to single player, I only spent like, what, one hour? So I guess that does have a co contributing factor to not only my how long my let's play took, but also uh, my personal thoughts and impressions in this video. So again, I recommend you go watch my, my let's play before watching this because it will give you a better idea on what I think. Yeah. So Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion is over a month old now. Uh, 100 percent completed the entire game, well the entire expansion. Uh, so what do I think of it? So basically the so basically the plot of the game is that uh, the plot of the Octo expansion is that you are an Octoling that was fighting Agent Three or someone I think it was Agent Three I, I it could be Agent Four I don't know three or four I, I don't remember and then after that uh, then then after that you you hear like the Calamari incantation and then something happens I can't remember how it goes I'm not, I'm not the lore I, you're gonna, I, you're gonna know how to tell. I'm not really focused into lore of Splatoon. I know people will eat that up, except for his stupid map pack, because F him. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not the guy for lore, so I won't go too in-depth to this. You can play it yourself. Uh, so, but then uh, you find yourself falling underground after the battle and being woken up by Captain Cuttlefish, and now you and him are trying to get out Get, get back to the surface world as you are stuck in a deep sea metro and uh thankful and thankfully you gotta find in order to get there you have to find the four things or thongs or thanos or whatever i don't know what you call it the four things uh you and and they are located in various sections of the rail of the entire deep sea metro underground railroad system and you uh, you captain cuttlefish and and the, and the driver of, of the battle bus, the Sea Cucumber, must m must go through various challenges to get to the four things and get out of the subway, eat fresh. So this plot is pretty nice. Personally, I feel like I feel like the original plot, single player plot, had more stakes, since we all know like Cali was missing. So I feel like the original game had more stakes since. It's like okay, we got we just gotta get out of there. Okay, we we have plenty of food here. We'll 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 be fine. That's what Captain Cuttlefish would say. I'm pretty sure. But yeah, uh, so a pretty pretty basic setup. I feel like again, it's not as much as much, the stakes aren't as high, but or, or as more as rare or medium rare, uh, as the single player plot. But it's still a nice setup. Uh. So as for how it works, basically, uh, b basically how it works is that every is that every level is like a train stop, and then, and you go in, you select your weapon or no weapon at all in a few instances. Uh, then you go, then you go to the gate, which will ask you for a number of CQ points. CQ points are earned by be by beating by beating single player levels. And by beating the levels, uh, but you need but you need to spend CQ points to even enter a level, and you will have to and you do lose CQ points when you die, when, when you lose all your lives. Uh, I personally think it's a really cool setup, and uh, and if you probably know, uh, uh, it's it's pretty easy. It's kind of easy to grind them. So if you're that kind, if you're that type of player, aka me. So so basically so basically each each. Each like level is basically just like a railroad stop where it has some form of challenge. You gotta do some tactic. Now, one thing I like is that every level in the main single player was just was just like point A to point B. You just gotta get the goal, get the zapfish. Um, 
here, it's not always that case. Sometimes it will be just like that point A to point B with obstacles and stuff in between and, and focusing on a gimmick per level. Uh, but most, but usually some, at least, I think like at least like half of the time, at least like 30 of the AV levels, you're, you, it's more, it's more set up like, like a mini game, if that makes any sense. Now you're not just, now you, instead of like just getting from point A to point B, you're now instead, there's a point A and then there's the puzzle. That's it. And then you got to beat the puzzle and then you win. Like, it's not like, oh, you beat the puzzle and then you like squid jump to the point B. No, it just ends, which is really cool. I, it did throw me off for a bit, especially in like some of the in some of the first arc, arcade style levels. But personally, I believe this variety makes it makes Octo Expansion stand out far more than sing, than the main single player. Yeah, and also it has eighty levels, which is more than the single player. So that's a big bonus. Uh, now how now here now the thing is now how the railroads work basically you start in railroad a and you do some levels you know it's like about this big and this is your start my head's the starting point and then this is this big now eventually once you get to the levels eventually you start having levels with like intersecting once you beat that level you will discover a new railroad so let's say this is like railroad the blue railroad and then oh cool you found a new railroad okay now you have more levels and then and then it keeps intersecting and then as you play more levels you'll find special ones that will like help you discover new rail railroads. Now there are 10 railroads um, in total. Uh, I'm starting to, I'm starting to lose my freaking mind how many times I said the word railroad. Uh, railroad, railroad, railroad. <laughs> Try saying that five times fast. Uh, so there are various railroads and and now now unfortunately now of course uh, each thing is located in a railroad. So there's only four railroads that have a thing and uh, yeah. Now there are some a variety of challenges. Now sometimes you'll bust balloons. Uh, most of the time you'll 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 have to guide magic. You'll have to guide a magic eight ball. Sometimes you'll just have to dodge a bunch of stuff, or even like to find an orb, or just again go from point A to point B. So yeah, uh, if you're not a fan of this style, then there might be a part of you that pref that will prefer uh, the single player. But personally. The point A to point B levels I find even better than the single player because there are a few elements in the single in the main single player that don't really feel that fleshed out. But in these new point A to point B levels, they they've been able to expand upon them and then make completely new obstacles. Some of them threw me off threw me off for a bit. If you again watch my let's play now, and what's even cooler is that there are even four sec there's even four specific squares that will lead to a rematch boss fight. Now, for those who don't know, basically, even though you're an octoling, you're still fighting octolings. Now, uh, they're known as sanitized octolings, which are basically just them but blue, and they sound weird. Uh, oh, and according to Marina, they have no pulse. Kids game! You know, for kids! But seriously, yeah. So, of course, these rematch boss fights are, um, are obviously sanitized. And what's cool is that for two of them, now for two of them, you just fight, it's the same fight, except, you know, just with a completely different weapons, and they throw way more stuff at you. They have, like, way more obstacles. Uh, but for two of them, they, they, you actually play in special weapons. For one of them, you play the baller, and the other play inkjet. Personally, the baller one's a little bit annoying, since it's kind of tedious, since the baller doesn't do much damage, and even with the explosion. But the inkjet one, the inkjet one was super fun. And I'm normally, and that's it's surprising for me because I'm normally not a fan of the Inkshot. I, I, I'm not a fan of the Inkshot. I don't like using it in the multiplayer, but the, it was, that boss fight was super fun. Easily one of the highest points in, uh, in Octo Expansion. Uh, yes. Now, the good thing is that although 80 level sounds intimidating, you don't have to beat any of them. When I, when I, got, to the final, when I got to the final boss, I only did about half of them. And then 20 of those levels, I, I'm like, 65 is and then like over like half like over all almost all of them I did off camera and then I did a, and then I did a couple on camera in the bonus videos uh, so personally uh, I, I don't personally so, so so if 80 level sounds intimidating to you which I know it will since I'll get into that later uh, it's not that bad and speaking of 80 levels that's not just it 
Uh, of course, there's a tutorial level, which will tell you, like, go, show you the basics, show you the ropes, which I think is really unnecessary, but whatever. Uh, if you like that type of thing, then there you go. Uh, but let's just talk, let's just move out to the, like, final section. So after collecting all four things, uh, the comp the telephone I forgot to tell you about uh, will build, will help you build, will build you a, a special contraption. It turns out it's actually a blender, and he, they almost get blended to death, and, but then Agent 3 saves them saves captain cuttlefish and agent eight at the at, at, at the very last minute while the telephone escapes then after that you have to go through the hole that agent eight left over and go through a series of gauntlets now don't worry it's no wily castle you can just save you can you can exit and save whenever you want and in fact if you watch my let's play i even found an exploit with the with the test data system which by the way i forgot to mention basically if you die enough times you can skip the level at, at the at a fee uh i never used it until like those final sections and i kind of want to replay them without them without that just to see how much i how much how, how the level design is but i will say for the other sections i didn't skip they the level design was really fun it it, it was really challenging easily some of the best level design in the in the entire game then once you get to the surface you will be meet by pearl and marina who was contacting you through through dial-up connection prior. Okay, it's not actually dial-up. Oh, I'll stop. But then after that, after you get out, the Statue of Liberty will come up. Yes, that's actually a thing. And then, and then the telephone will reveal itself to be known as Commander Tartar. Tartar sauce. Screw it. Uh, now suppose. Now, if you don't know, basically the gist of it is that Splatoon takes place in a post-apocalyptic world where all the humans are dead and. Squids and octopuses have evolved into humans, so so basically, so basically, uh, before then, a scientist created Commander Tartar, into killing everything. I'm assuming. Basically, you have to build this contraption, and you got to do a turf, you got to do a battle royale turf war with it, and after that, he, he goes down. Yeah, he, yeah, he goes down. But if you do, if you fail, um, if if you fail, then uh, then the game became Resident Evil. So yeah, personally, I really enjoyed the final boss fight. It is kind of difficult since if you screw up even a couple of ex of the of the explode of the hyper bombs, then you could basically then you basically just failed. But if you know what you're doing, it's pretty fun. Uh, after that, the credit credits roll, uh, and you and and after that, after beating it for the first time, you get to unlock the octolings. Uh, I won't go into octolings. Really, because I've plenty of people done that. They're basically just the same thing. Although one thing I will complain is that why do the why do the Vimos have like only two hairstyles? They only have the wavy one and then the ponytail. I mean, I like both of them. Just I want more for the boys. You don't need you don't need more obviously because the afro it does everything. But for the girls, it's kind of annoying. Uh, af but after beating that, uh, you will like be able to you'll be able to unlock a special vending machine. In the, in the central hub, which will allow you to exchange CQ points for meal tickets in the, in the, in Inkopolis. And also every time you, you beat every single level in one railroad, uh, a, another character, I can't remember his name, sorry, the, 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 the isopod guy, looking guy, will give you an armor piece to bring in the surface. You can lock things like the octoling armor to the armored, Standard armor. I don't know why you can't play as like the, the base armor, like the base clothing. Uh, you can unlock Captain Cuttlefish's armor uh, clothing, and then even CQ's little hat. But there's one more thing. After beating every single level, you will unlock the secret final boss. Uh, I'm not gonna say what it is because you're gonna because because Jesus Christ, it's basically it's basically if Dark basically the final boss is if Dark Souls had a foursome with Cuphead. Super Ghouls and Go no Ghosts and Goblins and Super Castlevania Three. That's all I'll say. That's all. I'll say. All I'll say is that the final boss is a foursome of that. But after beating that, you will get the final unlockable costume piece. So yeah. All in all, I think personally this is it, it's this is this is a really good package. I really like the new level design, and it's just really nice. But going back to that Dark Souls foursome thing. A lot of people have been saying that this thing, that the game is really hard. Now, I, I now as I said earlier, 
I've played this prior to Octo Expansion. I played Splatoon 2 for about 300 hours, according to my Nintendo Switch. 300 hours of the game. But honestly, I don't really... I mean, a lot of the levels don't seem that hard. The early levels are obviously easy. Definitely more challenging than the, than the, than the base single player. I'll give it that. Uh, now, once you get to like the final couple, like the last thing, it got di more difficult. It really only gets difficult when you're going for 100% completion because uh, other than the secret final boss, uh, like the, the levels I had to clean up were were pretty challenging. They were pretty annoying. There were some, there are some, although I don't know why, for some reason, some of the more infamous levels like girl power and then the one where you have to dodge a bunch of bu bullets. I didn't find it as hard as say other people. I, find, I, I hear those levels in particular being so annoying in the community and I got them down in a few tries. So I don't really know. They're definitely difficult, especially because of the fact that one of them is like really early on. But the other one's not saved until like near the end. So you're good. And personally, I, I really, I really enjoy, I really enjoy it. Yeah. So personally, the difficulty, it really only gets difficult if you're going for 100% completion. But like up to the final boss, which again, if you, if you screw up just a little bit, it, it can, you know, you're basically doomed. But then again, you can infinitely retry. So yeah, they, same thing goes for the final section. You can infinitely retry and even do the exploit I did. Yeah. So personally, in terms of difficulty, it really only gets super difficult, really only gets difficult if you're going for 100% completion, which I know a lot of people are doing since, well, well, you want to get the most out of your money. You want to get the most out of your, the most bang for your buck. Uh, so that's basically it for my review. Personally, I really enjoy it. I recommend you buy, you, you purchase Octo Expansion if you haven't, you haven't gotten it yourself, if only for the Octolings and the Afro haircut. And yeah. So personally, all in all, yeah, again, as I said, it's, it's great. It's a great, the levels are fun, mostly. Uh, the, the, the new challenges are great. The new, the, everything's just great. So that's all I'll say. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, do the use. I'll see you guys next time. And I have a big project planned. So stay tuned. I'm Ebony Maw. I'm kidding. That's not my, that's not my plan. I'm doing, I'm doing something I've been wanting to do for a while. I'll explain next time.